Hey gamers, today we're going to look at Dwarves, the big box. Let's check it out. All right, this is a pretty big board to get everything in one frame, but I think I did it. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to pick out your character from all of these wonderful little uh, dwarf sheets. And then you're going to pick your uh, little figure that matches the character you picked. You're going to take a little wooden heart and put it on the top of their little health track. Uh, you see where your starting gate is. This one is a starting gate of two, so that's why he started at two. Some start at one, some start at four, some start at different uh, areas on the board depending on which one you get. And then, of course, they all come with a special ability. Each one kind of breaks one of the regular rules in the game. You have your dice here, your parish tiles here, your hero marker here, your doom marker there. You're going to put piles of uh, goblins and elves and uh, uh, trolls and their respective categories there. You're going to have the uh, all the dice for those villains too as you're going to be rolling those in the game. You'll have a uh, tokens upgrades you can get by completing certain quests during the game. You have your quest deck that you're going to shuffle up and put in the order of A, uh, oh where's B, there's B, and then of course C's at the bottom. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to the bottom of this deck to get to one of those C cards and complete that C card. Once you've done that, you've won the game. Now, to make it easy, they suggest you take off maybe four cards. The rule book tells you if you want to make it hard, you put all the whole deck in there. But if you want to make it a little bit easy, just get rid of some of the cards. That way, you don't have to com complete as many adventures. Now, the thing is, though, uh, this board will tell you the setup for every different quest. There are several quests in the big box. All of them use different type of tokens. Sometimes they use these diamonds. Sometimes they use these siege tokens. Tokens, sometimes that dragon token, which is really awesome. Uh, but it, it, the game is very easy to tell you how to set up. In fact, the rule book for the first for the first game basically just spells it out for you here about what the setup is, just to kind of show you. So here it is. It's saying, hey, put one of those decks out there, and then from the adventure deck, deal three out here. So what I would do is deal three of these out. And what these are, these are like special adventures that if you complete and they're very self-explanatory, it could be fighting, it could be crafting something, it could be going, just going somewhere. If you, uh, in completing a short challenge, if you can do that, you'll get a reward. Sometimes it's equipment cards, which are shuffled and put over to the side there. Um, but uh, you uh, also have one of these to complete as well. This is one of the main missions here. And if you complete it, it will basically wipe the board clear of these and bring out more. Um, which can be good or can be bad. You have your little axe for the council chamber tracker. This is in the negative. You don't want to be in here. That's in the positive. You want to be up here as far as you can. That way you can build uh, tools and whatnot. Anyway, how does this game go? Well, it's very simple. What you're going to be doing, it says here on the board, is you're going to advance the hero marker. That's the first thing you do is advance that marker. Remember, one of the ways you can lose is if the hero marker and the doom marker meet. Another way you can lose is if one dwarf dies during the game, you're out. Other than that, win conditions are as, sta as stated. Now, on this doom track, let me just kind of show you, or the, uh, sorry, the hero track there. Let me just try to show you what some of these icons mean. Uh, first off, any of these black icons, which you see a lot, they're telling you to roll these three die and put out the results wherever these gates are. So, for instance, they'd spawn in gate five, gate five again, and then this is something different. They'd spawn in gate one here. They later on they'd spawn in gate four here, gate one here. Later on, gate you know two they'll start spawning on. But that tracker will have these people spawn in different areas. And how that's going to work is as I am playing this game. Let's say that it's my turn. I start off. I move my hero tracker, I got to roll, they're going to come out at five. So I roll these, these each have two blank sides and the rest of them have different icons on them. That never happens. That's incredible. So no one came out. But let's say that I rolled something like that, then two trolls would come out. Now if ever, this is kind of like pandemic, if there were, if there, were, there are five or more people on a roll, okay, so let's say there are five. Then you'd bring out one of these parish tokens. And how these work, this is going to spread the bad guys around and make it faster for them to come out from the gate. For instance, you have these arrowheads. They can be black, white, or brown. This one is black here. And it basically shows you the orientation of where it goes. So it's black, it actually goes straight down here. Now, let me see. If it was white, it would go this way, here, this way. It would go down this way. If it was brown, it would gone to the left. 
but it's black, so it says, hey, two goblins, if you have two goblins, put them over here. If I have two orcs, which I happen to, I'll bring them over here. And what if I had extra orcs and goblins, okay? Would all the goblins go there? Would all the trolls go there? No, the rest of them, after I split them up, would go down here. Now, the next time I spawn someone in gate five, uh, they don't start here, they start over here. So you could have another breakout. And depending on where they're, you know, maybe it's going to be brown this time, it goes out this way, maybe some more people go here, and that causes another breakout. So you can have a chain reaction of breakouts here. And parish land is awful because you can never repair it, at least in the first adventure you can't. And uh, how it works is if anyone has to travel on it or land or go by it, they will lose one health on their player shield, plus they advance the Doom Tracker. Uh, one space. Now, whenever you advance the Dune Tracker, you do not do the action on the board. Uh, it's only when you advance the Hero Tracker there. But anyway, that's how spawning evil is. Now, the other things that are bad to see on this track here, there's a few other, is one is, hey, shuffle two cards, or, you know, two evil cards or evil adventures, I don't know, I can't remember what they call them here, into the deck. What does that mean? Well, you see these adventure cards down here? They are boarded in white. Well, there are some other cards with the same back that you're going to shuffle separately, and they're in black. Now, these are awful things, and you want to get them done. Sometimes it's immediate stuff. Oh, no, move the Doom Tracker two steps. That's not good. And sometimes it's different quests that you have to complete. Now, if you don't complete this quest, but you complete this one next, then it'll trigger whatever this bad thing is here as, as well. So you definitely want to get these done and get them out of the way, and you're going to be shuffling two into whatever deck you're on, either the A or B deck, uh, every time. So this kind of makes the game a little bit harder. And, of course, changes it up. Gives you different adventures that you have to, or different perils you have to take care of. The other one is the little axe marker there. Whenever you see that little axe marker on the board, Basically, that is when you're moving this council tracker here back one space. So you'd go back one space. Now, if you're in any of these, any of these negative spaces, it will do negative things to your gameplay. You definitely want to stay out of this one. You definitely want to move the track up in the opposite direction, but I'll tell you how to do that later. Next up, it says, hey, reveal new cards. So if anyone had, let's say another player had come around and maybe they had completed this one and these two, okay? Well, then I would deal out two more adventure cards like so. Or maybe they had completed this one, I'd wipe the board clean of all those and deal out another quest card. Either way, once you've dealt out the new cards, then it says, hey, perform two actions. Now there's three different actions you can choose from. They are on your player board right here. This one is fight. How you fight is you'll roll whatever number of die are listed down below here. And if you can roll a four, five, or six, that will kill a goblin troll or elf. Goblins are four or plus, trolls are five or plus, elves are six or plus. It even says that on the player board up at, top, up, up at the top if you forget. Uh, now, second thing you can do is you can talk to the council. That's what this hand means. It's one of the things it means. Now, this guy is very weak. He's not a talker. He's a fighter. But if so, you'd roll as many dice, and that's how you can move this little track up. So as you see here, let's say someone had a hand action of four okay so they had to roll these four if they get fives or sixes they're moving up the track well i only got one six so there you go so i'm only gonna move up one on a five or plus now eventually it becomes a six or plus as you move down here and these happen like if, let's say i was here do i get both of these special abilities now that i'm past there no i only get the one that i'm currently on so sometimes you want to stay where you're at because you like that special action you have but the best one to get is to be at the very top here because that opens up the weapons deck and on this, this one, what you would do is roll as many dice as you have in your hand action there. And if you rolled a four plus, you get one of these cards. And these are cards that can give you health, give you weapons, give you upgrades and stuff like that, protect you on certain things. You know, that one gives you an extra heart there. So all of these are really awesome things. There's more in the deck there, but they're really awesome things that can help you in the game. And you definitely want to craft a few of these weapons or, or things that can help you out because that's really going to help all the players, and you can share those rewards with any player. So the person who crafted it can share it with any other dwarf if they want to. They don't have to necessarily keep those if they don't need them. So, for instance, if I crafted a weapon, but I'm already good at fighting, I know someone else isn't, I can give them the weapon. Now, the last action you can do is move. You'd roll both die and then roll, get, go the higher of those two spaces. The only thing to talk about when it goes to movement, you have these tunnels around the board here. Tunnels are all scattered around, so it makes you, makes you get easier around the board. So if I was here, I could go one, 
two, three, and move around. It just lets you move around faster. Now, if a parish token is covering a, t uh, a tile, then you cannot, of course, go through that tunnel anymore. That tunnel is blocked off, which is another reason why you kind of want to have someone up here fighting all the invaders here. Pretty soon, invaders are going to be coming from the, the west here, from the uh, northeast there, and they're going to be, and even from the south, and be surrounding you for a while. So you're going to be battling a lot of people. But that's the game. Basically, uh, once that player completes their two actions, they complete the same action twice if they want to. Then the next person would move the hero tracker, do whatever uh, action it says there, and then reveal any new cards, and then take their two actions. Uh, the game is over, like I said, if you complete one of the C decks here, and the game is lost if the hero and uh, Doom Tracker meet, or one of the dwarves die. And that's the game. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, I got this game last minute with a bunch of pre-orders that were coming in, and I thought, you know what, it's on sale, let me try this out. I generally do not like co-op games, or my group doesn't. And when I saw this a few years back, I went, oh, that's interesting, ah, it's co-op, I won't get it. But then looking at it again, and the big box was at a good deal, I was like, I think this is something we'd love. And so far, I was right. Well, we love this game. My nephews, who are not much on co-ops, love this game because it eliminates the alpha, alpha player because different dwarves do different things right. And so everyone's trying to figure out their best thing. Like, you go here, you go there. You know, it's, it, no one's really complaining about what role they have because they pick the, even the runner, who we thought was like totally insignificant. Boy, did we need him. No one got a heavy runner, and there's a lot of those missions where you're just trying to go here real quick and travel here, or escort someone from this land to this land, or touch this land real quick. And they're like, oh man, I forgot you complete so many adventures there. Now, why don't you just uh, you know, go through every brown quest? That makes sense, right? Ignore all the adventures. You really can't, because the adventures will stop the Doom Marker from advancing, or move it back some, or give you uh, extra weapons, or give you, uh, you know, something, something to do. You don't have to roll your dice next round. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, just great things that those adventures can help you do. So you do want to solve some of those. And sometimes you can't solve the big quests on your own. So you can do some side adventures while you wait. It's not bad. It's not bad. You definitely want to get your track all the way up to the King's Council, whatever it is, where you can start crafting uh, weapons. That was our big mistake the first time around. We never crafted weapons. Now. You should take out, I think it's four cards, they say, off the top deck or whatever to make the game a little bit easier. We have not done that yet, and we have come so close to winning. We're trying to win on the hardest level, but we enjoy the challenge because the thing is, you can't ignore anything. You can't ignore anything. If you ignore the elves, uh, trolls, and goblins, they're going to run over the board and you're going to lose. If you ignore the you know evil card quest, if you say, oh, I'll, just let, I'll just let the Doom Tracker advance, that Dune Tracker is going to advance way too fast. You're going to be like, oh no, and the game's going to end, which got us the first time. Um, but you can't ignore anything in this game, and it is really well done. I've not played the other adventures. I've just played the first one because we're trying to beat each one on hard. But the rule book is very self-explanatory. It tells you what the setup looks like for everything. So it's very easy. I cannot wait to play through all these. And once I play through all the quests, I would definitely play through them again. So this, this was a good buy. All right, gamers, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, you know what to do. Game on!